everybody. Welcome back. What I'd like to show you today, uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, it started with this right here. This is like my first version of it. I'll explain in a bit why I'm using slime blocks here. Um, but what this is, is instant cereal. So, uh, what, what is cereal? Cereal means you're sending a, a set of data. So just a lot of inputs that say on or off pretty much. Bits or even bytes. A byte is eight bits. This is only half a byte. Um, over one line uh, in a certain time. And uh, most serial I've seen, well, all serial I've seen, except for this one uh, that I made, um, uses like one tick per bit or maybe two or possibly even three ticks. So there would be a signal and then if it's off there wouldn't be a signal and if it's on there would be a signal. And uh, on this side I have the transmitter and on this side I have the receiver. Um, what's special about this is that it all happens instantly. So uh, at the same moment all signals are sent to the other side using uh, micro ticks or I like to call it micro te technology. Uh, or micro technology, it doesn't really matter. I kind of prefer micro technology. Uh, there's even something that I like to call nanotics, um, but they don't apply here at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I think it's probably time to show you this thing in action. So I will enter a piece of data 0111. Uh, I should actually be reading from the right 1110. And you see that is sent over instantly. The moment these retract, these lamps are turned on because only these pistons were powered and this one was not. Um, how does this work? Well, it works the exact same way as normal transmitters, only instead of using one tick delays, it uses micro tick delays. On the side here, I have a couple of monostables which send one micro tick uh, pulses. And if this torch down here is not powered, it's not going to pulse. That uh, should be rather simple. And on this side, I have a similar setup. Uh, so when this is retracting, it will only power if at that exact same time there was a pulse here. Because it will retract this, so the pulse can go through. And two micro ticks later, this block will be retracted, so that it won't re reach this piston anymore. And that's how it works. So that's how it filters exactly the mi the monostable that you want. Um, now this is uh, fairly limited. It's only a proof of concept because right here it's only sent over a pretty small distance. And I found a way to send it over a slightly bigger distance, but it's still kind of useless to me. It's still just a proof of concept. I think it's cool, but useless. So what I'm using is I'm using uh, this repeater here, these are like four repeaters, but um, it will use two of them if there are two pulses at the same time, and it will use uh, four of them if there are all four, if they're all four powering. Um, so basically, what happens is there will be a pulse, and then this repeater can't do anything anymore in the same tick to provide support for another pulse. And what it does is it will unlock the next repeater, which will then respond to the next pulse and it will power as well and then with a little bit of delay before it power or unpower this one I'm able to receive the pulses on this side as well so let me enter uh, some data here let's do uh, 1011 and when this unpowers this happens and that's exactly what I just entered so it's working perfectly uh, I had to do something interesting here to add more delay between each monostable like that um, because otherwise you would get uh, the pulses would merge and it would break over here and what you would get is this here is not needed but this basically says which one of these powers first and that should always be this one but if there's a long pulse it actually appears to be this one instead and that's how I figured that out but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. I will make a world download. It will be available in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed. 
and uh, the tutorial for the combination lock is coming it's underway but it's not just there yet um, forgive me I hope you don't mind too much uh, oh I think I forgot to mention why I'm using slime locks here uh, it's actually very, very crucial because uh, when a pulse is sent if one of these redstones updates other pistons then that would mean that these pistons would retract too early and uh, the pulses would be too long or just at the wrong time and they would merge and by using slime locks I prevent this redstone from updating these piston arms and by that I'm also preventing them from updating the pistons themselves so that's how that works and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you so once again I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time